I'm Natasha Gonzalez. I'm a flora biologist with a local conservation authority. I just spend my days um, in the summer months doing natural botanical inventories of different habitat types. The work that I do is very rewarding because of the fact that I do feel like it has an impact um, to protect the biodiversity on the landscape. Native plants, they've co-evolved they've co with our local flora and fauna. They're highly adapted to the local site conditions, the local ecology. So once they're established on the site, they're very low maintenance. They provide food and shelter, uh, some both summer and winter habitat for a lot of different species. They are fundamental essentially to the local ecology, to having them on your landscape is a simple, small little thing that you can do to help support um, your local wildlife. From birds, butterflies, pollinating insects, all of them will appreciate um, the fact that you've chosen to take that little space in your backyard and dedicate it to native plants. Site prep is everything when you're looking to start a, a garden. If you're wanting to begin one in the spring, then you want to prep your garden the fall before. And the first thing that you're going to do is to remove all the existing grass that's in the area because that grass is competition. The easier thing that you can do is to solarize an area and what that involves is basically just laying the area of existing grass, covering it with with a layer of cardboard and then on top of that cardboard you're going to put soil. On top of that soil you're going to put mulch and the whole purpose of that is to kill the existing grass and other seeds that are pre present in the soil. One of some things that you'd want to think about is overall concept. What is the aesthetic that you're looking to achieve? Is it going to be a simple design or is it going to be a more involved, elaborate design? And then the next thing is to work with the space that you have. Determine the dimensions um, and to actually measure it out. A lot of people find it helpful to actually draw it, draw it out on a piece of paper. The main thing to do is to document fixed points in your garden, be it a driveway or a fence line or large existing trees to really plot out those areas and then you know the area that you have to work with in order to incorporate your, your plants within it. Now that you know the area that you're working with, then you can decide how many plants can fit into that space. We generally recommend about five to seven native species that's attractive not just to you but also to the pollinator species in your area. Um, the more diversity you have, you're likely to target a wider species of, of pollinating insects and butterflies and hummingbirds just to, to name a few examples. We recommend locally sourced native plants from your local growers. You may try to grow your plants from seed. Uh, that's also um, a good option. When you're growing your garden, just embrace the change, embrace the beauty that is going to be coming in in the form of your flowers, but also in the form of your pollinator friends, the bumblebees, the hummingbirds, the, the butterflies. It's all in all, it's a beautiful thing.